2024 has been a weird year for movie marketing. There have been some movies that I've really enjoyed that had weird trailers or trailers that didn't quite give the right message of what the movie was about. And then there've been movies that I disliked that actually had good trailers that made me think I was getting one thing, but I was actually getting something else. So here are my top five most mismarketed movies of 2024. Before I get into the top five though, I wanna do some honorable mentions. First one, Abigail. This one, I don't think was mismarketed in the sense that it sold a different movie. I think it showed exactly what the movie was about, which I think is the issue. I honestly think this marketing campaign would have been so much more successful if they hid the fact that, spoiler, Abigail is the vampire. Next one, Alex Garland's Civil War. Now I knew going into it, it wasn't gonna be a full on action movie because it was from Alex Garland and that's not quite what he does. The marketing also leaned a lot more into the why of this Civil War and why these different factions are going against each other where the movie itself doesn't actually focus on that. It's more about war photography, journalism, that kind of stuff. And for that, I really enjoyed it, but I feel like a lot of people probably went into that expecting a straight up action movie that was gonna explain how this conflict started, what each side was fighting for. There are still moments of violence and those moments of violence are very impactful, but that's not the focus of the movie. And I don't think that's necessarily bad, but they maybe should have been a little more upfront about that in the marketing. And last of my honorable mentions, this is a more recent one. I feel like I just had to include this in here because I know someone's gonna bring it up in the comments if I don't. Joker, Folia Du. This one is on the list, not just because the marketing was kind of flawed, but I think just conceptually, the idea of this version of Joker was flawed. And because of that, there is this disconnect between what Todd Phillips is trying to do and what the audience expects from a Joker movie. I won't get into spoilers because the movie just came out, but he and the marketing team and Warner Bros. in general could have probably done a better job of selling what kind of movie this one is and what kind of Joker this is. Because I think a lot of people are still going into it expecting the DC Comics Joker when that's not what this is. I also don't mind it being a big swing and doing something different. I just don't think it totally worked anyway. And now the top five most mismarketed movies of 2024 so far, in my opinion. Number five, Ghostbusters. Frozen Empire. This is another one of those situations where the movie they try to sell in the trailers is not as good as the movie we actually got. The trailers leaned heavily into the action, into the suspense of this ice ghost monster coming around, terrorizing New York, causing all this havoc, Ghostbusters fighting, some of them may not even make it through. And the movie is not really that, it's actually a lot more boring. A lot of the movie is them just kind of wandering around trying to solve this mystery of this object that's connected to this ice ghost thing. And it doesn't really go anywhere until the third act. There's also a subplot with Spangler's granddaughter. And that was sort of interesting, but again, that wasn't really in the trailers at all. It had potential and it did kind of go somewhere towards the end, but even still, it doesn't make up for most of the movie just being about nothing. There's a scene in the trailer of Paul Rudd and the kids and their mom. <laughs> You think, oh, something cool's gonna happen there. But that scene, that frame is not even in the movie at all. I won't say they were fully lying to us per se because it is about an ice ghost monster coming to terrorize New York, but they did lie about how much of that is actually in the movie or how important that actually is to the overall plot. Number four, Challengers. This is a situation where they did take one thing from the movie and they leaned heavily into it in the marketing. There's the scene of Zendaya and the two boys together and just hinting at this big threesome scene, but that is not what the movie is about at all. I actually love this movie. It's one of my favorites of the year. It's really more about the rivalry between these two boys and their love triangle with Zendaya's character, how it affects their tennis game, how they started in college and how it leads to them in this match that they have that kind of is the framing device of the whole movie. There's this final match between the two guys. They try to make it more like it's some kind of erotic drama, but really that's not what it is. It's just about the relationship between these three people and how it connects to the game of tennis. I thought that was so much more interesting than what the marketing tried to make it seem like. And that's why I didn't put it higher on this list because you still are getting what most of the trailer was giving you. The whole threesome thing was such a small portion of the movie. It really focused on so much more. Number three, Long Legs. This one was a little frustrating for me because I think it is, a, again, a great movie, but they chose the wrong marketing approach. They tried to sell this as one of the scariest movies of all time, like Exorcist, Conjuring level, like you were not gonna be able to sleep after you watched this movie. And then I watched it and while I do like it, it's nowhere near the scariest movie I've ever seen. If you haven't seen it, Long Legs is more of a slow burn, thriller, drama. It does have supernatural elements, but it's more again about this kind of building of tension and just making a very creepy atmosphere. There's like one or two jump scare kind of moments and I don't think there needs to be a lot of them, but in terms of me being scared, I would say I was not scared most movie. I was just more maybe tense, maybe a little on edge, but it's not something that 
was like seared into my brain. There are images, specific moments that could definitely be seared into your brain watching this. But to me, I didn't think the movie was necessarily overtly scary. It's a good movie, but I think they set the wrong expectations going in. And I think a lot of people then went like, oh, well, that wasn't even that scary. When reality is more of a creepy serial killer thriller. And I don't think that's bad. It's just, that's what they should have told us up front instead of trying to sell it as a big, scary, traditional horror movie. Number two, Afraid or Afraid AI. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. I think I'll just say Afraid. In the trailers, they try to make it seem like there was something deeper happening with this AI, that there may be some supernatural element, that maybe it's some kind of demon in there or something. They actually just straight up lied because when you watch the actual movie, some of the stuff in the trailer is there, but the context is different. It basically amounts to the generic evil AI thing. They don't really do anything new or interesting with it. Even at the end, it just kind of ends. There's not a lot of resolution. There's not a lot of interesting questions posed about it. A lot of the stuff they showed in the trailer made it seem like it was gonna be something much deeper and it really was not that. It's just a very, very dissatisfying experience. I mean, the actors are doing the best they could under the circumstances, John Cho, Havana Rose Liu. They had some interesting setups in the movie, but again, what we got was nowhere near what they teased in the trailers. And I do feel like the movie they teased in the trailers probably would have been more interesting than the one we actually got. There's a moment where they, when the kids is looking at their iPad and the AI voice is like, do you want to see what I really look like? And they're trying to make it seem like she's like a demon or something. Would you like to see what I look like? Yes. That's not in the movie at all. There's also a line where she's like, do you want to meet my friends? I'm here. Do you want to meet my friends? Yes. You must promise never to tell. And to make it seem like, again, there's gonna be some like demons or ghosts. And while in the movie, technically speaking, I guess she did have friends. It's not that at all. It's something weirder and less developed. So again, the marketing totally lied and the movie we actually got was way worse. And now, number one, this one, if you've been active on Twitter, will be no surprise to you, Transformers 1. This movie had the opposite problem of Afraid, where the trailer sucked, but the movie is awesome. When I watched the first trailer for this movie, I was so turned off because they leaned so much into the comedy. They tried to make it more like just a regular kids movie. The comedy seemed very much to lean into that well, that just happened sort of style. And that to me is a huge turnoff. I love Transformers. And to see it be dumbed down to that level, I was I was completely off board for that. But when you watch the movie, it is so much more than that. It's so much deeper themes. There's drama, there's a lot of emotion to it. The split between Orion Pax, who becomes Optimus Prime, and D16, who becomes Megatron, is not sold that much in the trailers. I mean, you get a little bit hints of it and you know what's gonna happen if you're a Transformers fan. I'm not gonna spoil what particularly causes the split, but it would've been nice to see a little more of that kind of shown in the trailer itself. Brian Tyree Henry especially gives an amazing performance as D16 and really sells his sort of descent into becoming a Decepticon, but you don't really get that much in the trailer. You just get a lot of dumb jokes. The trailers leaned a lot into the comedy surrounding Bumblebee. I like Bumblebee as a character. I like Keegan-Michael Key, but I was personally not a huge fan of this interpretation of the character. I thought a lot of his jokes fell flat, but my audience seemed to love them. But overall, I would say the trailers, especially the first one, did a huge disservice to this movie. And you can see it now in the box office because it's not doing that well, but thanks to TF1 guy on Twitter, it is picking up steam again. For the most part, I think a lot of people were turned off by it because of that first trailer, especially older fans. But I think the word of mouth is starting to pick up again and people are starting to discover this movie. So hopefully it didn't do that much damage, but I hope Paramount learns from this and in the future does better marketing for their movies, because it's not the first time they've done bad marketing for a great movie. So are there any movies that you think were mismarketed this year that should be on this list? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to keep watching more videos like this, like and subscribe or click the video that's going to pop up on the screen. Till then, I will see you in the next one.